Good afternoon. Um, so before we get started, I would like to cover a few housekeeping topics. Uh, first, today's webinar is being recorded. Uh, we will be able to share a link with you after the event is complete. Uh, we welcome you to revisit the content yourself and share it with your colleagues or uh, your network. And second, please have your mic on uh, mute during the presentation. I will share there will be a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. So please type your question in the chat box and at the end, we will be sure to answer your questions. All right, so thank you for joining us today for the Johns Hopkins School of Education Special Education Programs virtual webinar. My name is Sion John. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions at Johns Hopkins School of Education. Also presenting today, we have Professor and Program Needs, Dr. Lori DeBenetport and Dr. Uh, Tamara Almarder. Uh, before we get started, uh, I would like to share the agenda for today's virtual webinar. We will kick off the presentation sharing an overview of the Johns Hopkins School of Education. Then both Dr. DeVenport and Dr. Martyr will introduce themselves and discuss an overview and details of the Masters in Special Education, both severe and mild and moderate, and the Graduate Certificate in Autism. One thing I want to point out is that the ABA program will be covered as a separate presentation on January 30th at 4 p.m. Going back to the agenda, we also have a former student who will share her experience during her time at Johns Hopkins University School of Education. And I'll wrap it up with admissions requirements and leave the floor open for questions at the end. All right, to start, quick facts about the Johns Hopkins School of Education. We are one of nine schools at Johns Hopkins University. We began offering college courses for teachers in 1909 and then became our own school in 2007 and celebrating our 10th anniversary last year. For school enrollment, we have approximately 2,600 students. Uh, we are accredited by NK and UCAP all programs that lead to licensure is approved by the Maryland State Department of Education. Uh, we have campuses in Baltimore, Maryland, Columbia, Maryland, and offer classes online. We are, uh, we are very proud to share that the Johns Hopkins School of Education is consistently ranked one of the top schools in education by the U.S. News and World Report. Hi, my at name this, is... At this time, I am going to hand the floor over to Dr. DeVenport and Dr. Martyr. They're going to introduce themselves and present on the graduate program in special education. All right, this, uh, I'm Dr. DeVenport. I have trained teachers in higher education for over 34 years. I've been at Johns Hopkins for about 13 years. I also taught school at a public school and a private school with young children with uh, special needs for five years before um, earning my doctorate. I do a lot of research on just improving teacher preparation. I've written several textbooks and I've presented uh, several workshops across the, the nation and also in Budapest, Hungary. I'm looking forward to meeting any of you who want to come to this program. Um, again, it's a very strong program and we'll talk about each of the parts of the program as we move on. Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Martyr. Uh, I've been at Johns Hopkins uh, for the past seven years. My areas of interest are the Applied Behavior Analysis Program that we have here, Autism, and Severe Disabilities. I Most of my research focuses on training educators to work with students with autism and training educators in the implementation of evidence-based practices. I look forward to having a chance to reviewing your applications to our programs. So if you were to think about what a master's of science in special education, why someone would be an ideal candidate for this, or who are the candidates who come to us seeking our programs, Many people are just individuals who have never taught before and want to work with kids with special needs and they don't have any teacher certification in their background. They don't have education in their background at all. And the nice thing about a special education program is that content is covered in its entirety in the two to two and a half years that you would be taking our courses. There are also some individuals who are currently teaching kids with disabilities 
either in the elementary, middle, or secondary adult um, grades, and they want to get some advanced skills, and they want to be better at what they do in the classrooms that they're currently working in. And then we also have um, individuals who are maybe general educators who have kids with special needs in their classrooms, and they recognize that they would have a better uh, skill level, uh, basically a better bag of tricks, if you would. Um, I think of it as a Mary Poppins bag. They would have more tricks in that bag to be able to serve the kids within their general education or inclusive classroom. They don't necessarily want to move into a special education classroom, but they'd like to be able to serve the kids that they're already teaching better. And, and every once in a while we have parents or administrators or other professionals who would like to know more about special education, but don't necessarily want to go into a classroom. They work in more of the advocacy or another professional organization. In terms of our options, we have um, several different options that you can take if you um, come into our programs. One is where you um, come into our program and you want to do it at an accelerated pace. Some of our international students might want to do that because they want to either get back to their own country or they want to get employed in the United States in some way as a special educator. And in those cases, we prescribe the sequence for them. They decide whether they want an elementary or secondary concentration within the special education master's degree. And it takes um, a few semesters, 15 months, um, to finish it up. Another option is to just go at your own pace. You know you want to get a master's. You might be limited in your finances and time because you have family that needs your attention. And we have many um, candidates like that where they might take one or two courses a semester depending on, the, again, the, the amount of money that they have and the time that they have. And in that case, you have up till five years to finish the program. Then we have a third option, and this is a partnership that's been in existence uh, for 24 cohorts, so that's more than 24 years. It takes two years to finish the program. Many of the people in that partnership serve as paraeducators during that time within the Montgomery County Public School um, organization, and they don't have to be a current paraeducator to get into this program. Um, they could just be someone who would like to be employed by Montgomery County as a para. And our current student will be talking later in the webinar to talk about her experience in that particular program. If you do enter into that option, it is a very prescribed sequence you go through with all of your buddies um, and you must be available on the nights that those classes are set up. Okay, so now we're back to uh, Dr. Marder. I'm going to be talking to you guys about the Masters in Severe Disabilities with an Autism Focus. So as the title of this master's degree um, indicates, this program prepares candidates to teach students with autism. And this is um, from birth through adult, but typically in our K-12 school systems. We have um, the courses that we offer are 12 courses, so it's 36 credits altogether. It is um, an enhanced training specifically focused on evidence-based practices, what we know um, that is research-based to improve the outcomes for students with autism. And of those of you who are interested in this program, you know that the numbers with regards to autism are growing in the school. So this really addresses that growing population and meeting their needs. The curriculum structure for this program, it is, like I said, 39 credits. Uh, most people can take two courses per semester, especially if you're working full time, meaning that you can finish the program in six semesters, and that's across the fall, spring, and summer semesters. Courses are all offered in our in the evening here at our Columbia campus. We also have some courses online as part of this program. I'll be talking about that momentarily. We also, um, as part of this master's degree, do require an internship experience for one semester. That internship typically can or may be planned at your place of employment as long as you have the ability to work with students and get and get direct feedback on working with students with autism in your classroom. So some features of what we're talking about, I addressed this um, a few seconds ago, that we're really focused on evidence-based practices. 
And those evidence-based practices that you will be learning in this program focus on a variety of skills. So teaching, communication, and social, social skills. How do we address challenging behaviors in the classroom? Inclusion, how do we prepare our teachers to work in an inclusive classroom to meet the needs of students with autism with varying needs? And what are the effective classroom program programming requirements specific to autism, as well as the current research regarding autism? So our curriculum addresses all of these areas uh, to focus on how do we address the needs of students with autism. So some people ask us, what's the advantage of coming to Johns Hopkins to focus on autism and get your master's degree? Like I said uh, before, 50% of our courses, so we actually have six courses that are offered online. Again, classes are offered in the evening, so if you are working full time, you are able to work during the day and come to school in the evening. Uh, our online class classes uh, are weekly sessions, so there's not necessarily a time that you meet a specific time, but you have the opportunity to work on skills each week. And then the course, the, another advantage is the opportunity to practice skills learned in your coursework through that final internship. So you learn all of these different skills throughout the program, and then your final internship, you're practicing those skills, and you're getting feedback uh, from two supervisors throughout the semester. And another advantage is that this program can be completed in two years. As I mentioned, um, most uh, courses are being offered during fall, spring, and summer sessions. Now I'm going to turn it over to Dr. DeVencourt. Oh, sorry, I'm not just yet. I'm also going to talk about the um, uniqueness of our autism program. Again, I think I mentioned this already, that um, there's a strong emphasis in evidence-based practice, uh, focusing on the application of current research to uh, teaching effectively in the classroom. We have a small class size. All of our faculty have extensive experience working with students and teaching students with autism in a variety of different settings. And um, again, coming back to our internships, you have the opportunity to practice those skills and receive supervision on your skill development. Now I'm going to turn it over to Dr. DeBettencourt, who's going to talk about our Mild to Moderate Disabilities program. Great. Thanks, Dr. Martin. The Mild Moderate Disabilities is somewhat of a misnomer because you'll get a degree a master's in special education, and it'll be generic certification in special education. And I think if you talk to any parent of a child with some emotional problems or some intellectual disabilities or learning disabilities, they don't think of it as a mild issue. They think of it as a pretty significant uh, problem that the child has in terms of accessing the curriculum without any difficulty in their school. So keep that in mind if you're thinking of working in the area of special education, this program would be appropriate. Many of our graduates end up teaching in programs that span the spectrum of cognitive abilities or emotional problems or learning disabilities. It's not just this mild moderate, so to speak. Um, the other thing is that we offer a certification option. Um, what that means is our program is approved by the Maryland State Department. And that means that when you finish our program and you submit your transcript, on the bottom of your transcript, it will say it's an approved program, MSDE approved program. And that means that you're basically certifiable. And if, you know, that your coursework that you completed will indicate to them that you have everything that you need to be certified. And keep in mind that the certification in Maryland is reciprocal with 40 other states. So that if you, your spouse decides to move out of Maryland, you would still be able to be a certified special educator. The other thing, if we move to the next slide, is that the um, curriculum structure is 39 credits. There's 13 courses. Um, most people take two to three courses um, each semester, and you can finish within four to six semesters. Our courses are offered at Columbia. Our Columbia campus people really love for two reasons. One, it's really easy to park here. You don't have to pay for parking. It's easy to find and there's lots of parking. Secondly, there's coffee in the building and snacks in the building. So if you come from um, your work environment and you haven't had a chance to grab something to eat, you're starving. There are There is a cafe in the first floor of the building and people can grab a sandwich and something to drink and go to class. All instructors have little difficulty with uh, with students who are eating while while they're lecturing. 
The other thing is that we have two internships. So of the 39 credits or the 13 courses, um, two are offered online and two are internships, which means that during the day, you would be either, if you're not working, placed in a school situation, or if you are working, we would probably get you placed as an internship in that in your place of employment. If you're in a school district that says that you cannot be placed there without taking a leave of absence, and most people can't take a leave of absence because they just can't afford to be out of work, then we try to set up your internships in the summer when you're not employed by that school district. But many of, of our candidates do do their internships in their place of employment. We don't, we work really hard to make sure that your internship is not a hardship for you in the sense of having to drive to a, um, from Virginia all the way to Baltimore. We try to make it work to be somewhat close to your, um, your own place where you live. Now, if we go to the next slide, the, the nice things about what makes this curriculum um, really kind of interesting and I think um, really perfect for a teacher who's working with kids with disabilities is that we go over the legal issues which are paramount to any special educator in terms of making sure that you're doing everything legally correct so that your principal uh, doesn't get upset. The other thing is that you know how to assess and evaluate your students' performances, usually in both formal and informal assessments. That means collecting data at the end of each lesson, as well as collecting data on a standardized test that your school is using at the end of each year. You also know how to make decisions about analyzing the data that you collect. Uh, this is uh, our applied behavior analysis class, and it's, it's nice because you will actually be taught how to do that um, so that it's uh, less taxing for you and, um, and can be done relatively easily while you're lecturing or doing your lessons. The other thing that we talk about a lot in special ed is developing effective and innovative um, IEPs or individualized instructional programs and whether and being able to do that across the content areas of math, literacy, and written language. That'll be a course where you'll have lots of opportunities to develop lesson plans given um, different student uh, descriptors and or with the students that you're actually working with during the day. We also have a classroom management course where you'll learn how to manage um, challenging student classroom behaviors. And as every teacher will tell you, if you cannot manage the behaviors in your class, you won't get to the instruction. So we feel very, um, uh, we feel it's very important for you to have at least one um, behavior management class. And in fact, you'll have two. Then we talk about collaborating because a big part of special education is collaborating across the other uh, teachers that your student on your caseload might um, come in contact with. Of course, parents are always the best collaborators because they know that child the best. We also have itinerant teachers and specialists that work with our kids, um, as well as administrators. So those others, in, in terms of um, on the team may have um, very limited information about special ed. They probably all have the student's best interest at heart, but you'll be the one directing um, them specifically in, in what this child can or cannot do, what their strengths and their weaknesses are, and you'll be collecting the data to talk about that. The other thing that I think Hopkins um, program really teaches teachers to do, and again, as, as you look at other programs, um, you might possibly be looking at other programs. One of the things that we uh, talk a lot about in all of our classes is um, being a reflective practitioner. And what we mean by this is that not only are you ethical, and, and I think most people go into the field would probably characterize themselves as an ethical practitioner, but you're reflective. And we teach you to reflect after every lesson, as well as at the end of every day, and more than just driving home at the end of the day and saying, well, that didn't go well. Um, really teaching you some skills on how to do it regularly and often so that you um, do change your behaviors based on, on your reflection and, and, and knowing how to reflect actively with that. Some of our advantages, uh, having taught at another university or two in my lifetime, I can tell you that there are some really um, distinctive advantages to our master's program. 
One is that it is um, certified, it is approved by the Maryland State Department for certification. So you'll have very little difficulty getting certified by the state once you send them your transcript. We don't send them your transcript because that's, uh, we're not allowed to do that. You have to do it, but by the time you finish in my program, you'll have heard from me multiple times on how to do that so that it's not difficult at all. Then remember it is, uh, you do have, uh, Maryland does have reciprocity to many other states, over 40. The other thing is it can be completed within one to two years. It's just up to you either if you join a cohort or if you go at your own pace or if you decide to do it accelerated. I'll work with you individually to make sure that the courses are um, set up in such a way that you can complete it as quickly as you want to complete it. The other thing that's pretty interesting about our program that you may not find in other programs is that we have two internships that are required. The nice thing about having two internships is the first internship we kind of think as a way to really help you. We have uh, uh, three people helping you through your internship. You have your internship instructor, which they have seminars on a regular basis to talk about what's going on. You have a mentor teacher, and then we hire a university supervisor who also watches over you. And so there's three people, I think of it as a three-legged stool. If one person is thinking that we need to add more, we would add another person to come in and help you. And at the time of the induction internship, we're really looking to advocate for you to make sure that you can um, accept and understand our feedback that we're giving to you and, and make the changes that you need to make to be a stronger teacher. By the time you take that second internship, though, we're looking that you can fly out of the nest and be successful. So that second internship, we're looking for you to take on a more distinctive role in the classroom and to be able to uh, perform, uh, the, to be able to use evidence-based practice and reflect the, reflect on your practice and make decisions on the data and, and, and your students will make progress. Keep in mind, this is not what many of you might know about in terms of undergraduate student teaching. You're not taking over the whole class. What you're doing is very specific lessons that we're going to guide you through so that you can implement those evidence-based practices specifically in a certain content area or with a specific group of students. And that way you can really focus on your skills in terms of developing a lesson plan and instructing the students and looking at their behavior, changing their behavior, writing a behavior plan or writing a lesson plan. So it's very uh, specific and again, you're getting guidance from a minimum of three people. The other bonus of our program is that our classes are in the evenings. The earliest our classes would begin would be 4.15. And, uh, and we go 4.15 to 6.45, and then 6.45 to 9.15, give or take 10 or 15 minutes. And that allows you to continue working during the day. Even our summer classes are in the evening, so that if you have an opportunity to work at a camp for kids, or you're working at um, extended school year programs and making some money and working with children, you don't have to stop doing that to attend our programs. And, our classes are set up to start our earliest, like I said, it's around 4.15, but in most cases, the instructors that teach that first class of 4.15 use the first 15 minutes for a warm-up activity so that some of the students who might be employed in the school that's a little bit further away, if they run into traffic, you're not um, penalized for coming in late. We just welcome you when you get there and we fill you in on what you missed in the warm-up activity later. So what makes it unique? Why would you choose us? I have to say, I just talked to a prospective student before I started this webinar, and our small class size is, is a, a definite bonus. Our instructors get to know the students in their classroom really well. We get to know your families. We get to know your car, if you have car trouble. We get to know you uh, really well. And you don't have to worry about registering for a class and it getting filled. Most of our classes are available to you. I make sure you register on time, so there isn't an issue of that, but it, they really are anywhere from eight to 15 in size. And I think of it as a boutique program in the sense that you do get a lot of individualized attention. The advisors, both Dr. Martyr and myself, are always available. If probably due to the internet, we're available 24 seven. I do probably prefer that you contact us by email before 10 o'clock at night, but we are online all the time so that you can leave your message and we'll get back to you. Um, the other thing is that 
We, as I said earlier, offer two courses on managing behavioral issues. Most programs, other programs only offer one. And again, if you don't have the behaviors under control and some of these kids have significant emotional problems or behavior problems or mental health challenges, and we wanna make sure that we help them get them under control so that they can have the opportunity to learn from your instruction. So we offer you two courses on that. Secondly, Maryland's one of the few states out there that sets up the certification for special education in two different sections, elementary and secondary. When I got my degree in special ed undergraduate, it was K-12. There's a big difference, as many of you know, between an elementary student and a secondary student. And there's different issues that you have to address, not counting the transition. There's other issues developmentally, and there's other issues in terms of instruction uh, as, a, as a teacher. So as a teacher at the secondary level, you're gonna need to know how to work with that other teacher that might be the biology or the history teacher or the language teacher. You're gonna to need to know how to co-teach with that person and how to be the, the teacher, not necessarily the teacher of record, but the, but the special educator who comes into another person's classroom. And at the elementary level, you have to be able to cover all of the content area that's covered at the elementary level. So we have um, more methods courses for the elementary teacher, elementary concentration. You take a math methods course, you take a spoken and written, language course so that you'll be uh, ready to go for all the, besides the reading, you'll be ready to go um, for all the methods that you might have to go in and help either the general education teacher or you might be actually teaching math at the elementary level. The other thing is that you have this opportunity to be supervised while you're teaching, while you're learning. And everyone who has ever taught, including myself, that first time that you're in front of kids, it's a little scary. And so we make sure that when you are out there on your own, that you feel confident in your skill level and confident that you will do well because we've, we've already groomed you to do that uh, with our two 10-week internships. Now I'm gonna turn it back to Dr. Martyr so she can talk about our very uh, special graduate certificate in autism. Okay, so before I talk about the certificate in autism, I want to jump back to something that Dr. DeBancourt mentioned about the Master's in Mild to Moderate, how that is a program that leads to certification. And one thing I want to clarify is the Master's degree in Severe Disabilities with an emphasis in autism is a program that does not lead to certification. So most folks who apply to our Master's degree in autism are folks who are already certified typically at the undergrad level. So if you are interested in certification, I would highly encourage you to look at our master's in mild to moderate. So folks who are interested in the autism piece can also look at our graduate certificate in autism, which is an online program. And this program is designed for folks who are certified already, certified educators or educational support personnel. It could be parents or other interested members of the community who want to gain that knowledge on how to support students with autism in the classroom or educational setting. One thing that, um, again, similar to our master's in autism, while our master's in autism really has a combination of the autism courses as well as the general special education courses, some of the courses that Dr. DeBettencourt mentioned, like collaboration, legal issues, and um, instructional practices, the um, autism certificate focused solely on those autism courses. So there is a total of um, 18 credits, so a total of six courses, which can be completed in one year. So fall, spring, and summer, so it's across three semesters if you are taking two courses each semester. So this is a program that can be completed pretty quickly. All of our courses are offered online, utilizing a Blackboard learning management system. And um, course content, content, excuse me, is set up in sessions that last about one to two weeks. So each, um, each one to two week session is focused on a specific content within that class. During those sessions, uh, students are expected to complete a variety of different activities from readings, reviewing videos, reviewing PowerPoint uh, files, and other media content. You also um, are required and have the opportunity to participate in online learning activities. These are quite a lot of fun. There's uh, discussion forums where you're talking about specific issues that you are learning about in the class, as well as how to apply it with the students that you might be working with. 
There's also group activities. We require student presentations as well. We can do all of this online. And um, as, along with completing quizzes and papers and other um, exams and other major assessments for each course. So an advantage of this online program, again, focus on this evidence-based practice. How do we apply the current research and um, apply it into a classroom setting? What are those strategies and what does it look like for students with autism? And we, as Dr. DeVettencourt mentioned, we've got that small class size faculty with extensive experience educating students with autism in lots of different settings. The one thing that um, I do like about teaching online is that although most of our course content is asynchronous, we do have the opportunity to meet online synchronously so that we can focus, um, so we can all come on online onto our computers from the comfort of our home, looking at each other through a screen and having a conversation about what we're learning in the class. So although there's a lot of content that's asynchronous. We do also have the opportunities for synchronous activities. So you get to meet people from all different areas across the country. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about the impact, but I did wanna mention the autism uh, certificate also covers, and Dr. Martin, correct me if I'm wrong, but it also covers inclusive classrooms. It has a special right. class for inclusive classrooms. So if you are teaching kids with autism and you are teaching them within an inclusive environment and you can define inclusive in any way that you want or any way that your employer defines it or your administrator defines it, the nice thing is this, there's a specific course that we've developed fairly recently on the research that shows how teachers can do that better. So we give you the tools to be able to do, uh, do the teaching, not just in a, uh, a, a class that just has kids with autism, but if these kids are being served in the general education environment, which is, I, I think, one of the advantages, again, of taking this program. One thing also I want to add, Dr. DeMeincourt, is with the, um, to definitely check out the courses online. Um, on our website because you can see the carryover between the masters as well as the graduate certificate and autism. So you can see all the listing of our courses. Right, and all of the um, descriptions of our right. courses are listed there, which is great. So a lot of times uh, people uh, who are prospective candidates ask us, okay, so what happens? What happens to your graduates? Where do they go? And, and how are they employed? Will I find employment? And will this program make a difference? Well, of course, I have to say, you're getting it from Hopkins. But besides the fact that you're getting a degree from Hopkins, we've had a long-standing partnership with a lot of the local school districts and many of the private schools that serve students with special needs. There are some people across the country who move here to get some help from the Kennedy Krieger Institute uh, that serves kids that are on the autism spectrum and we place some of our interns into that, into their various schools and programs across both Baltimore and Rockville. So that you'll have that opportunity to learn from those individuals that work in those classrooms and they, they are very special and they do a great job and, and that's why people move across the country to, um, to have their own child uh, be served by them. The other thing is that we've had uh, long-standing partnerships with a lot of the local school districts, um, Montgomery County in particular. We've been training their paraeducators for over 20 years. And I would have to say, uh, again, our current student is, is a graduate of that particular cohort. She'll talk more about it. But 99.9%, .9%, if not 100% of our uh, graduates who have left that program have been employed. So in terms of finding employment, um, we, we help you write your resume, we help you get ready for the interview. Many of the questions that we've asked you and we've asked you to write about in, term, in your internships, you've then been asked about in the interview um, in these school districts. So you feel most of our candidates come back from the interview and go, wow, that wasn't so hard. I know what I, I know the answers and I just smile. A portion of the answers, that's our goal is to make sure that you know the answers. And the other thing to keep in mind is that usually our graduates report back to us that they feel certainly nervous in their first year when they're on their own, but they feel confident in their first year that they've been given the tools. They just need, maybe, uh, maybe they just need to get their own kids and again, our, our, um, our former student can talk about what her first year was like. I still remember my first year a million years ago. Um, it's just a special year. 
um, but we do feel that we give you the tools so that you can be you can be successful. So I'm going to introduce Grace Eisen, who graduated from our program several years ago, or a couple years ago anyway, and you can talk about your experience. Okay. Grace, for having me. I'm happy to be here. Uh, so I'm Grace Eisen, and I was in your position five or six years ago. I came into the program, uh, I had a bachelor's degree in psychology. I came into the program with 10 years, having been employed for 10 years as a paraeducator in a Montgomery County Public School. Prior to that, I worked for the government. So education was also a career change for me. Um, I am now in my third year of teaching and in my current position, I teach fifth grade in a homeschool model and I'm co-teaching that class. A homeschool model you'll find in Montgomery County Public Schools means that within the classroom, there are students who are general ed students and there are students with IEPs for special ed students. And I'm responsible as a co-teacher to teach everybody. So the advantages of the program, I chose this program for several reasons. I had looked at other programs to get my certification. I chose the program because I could continue to work in my own school since I was already employed. And as an MCPS employee, I uh, was receiving health benefits. I was not in a position to quit my job to go to another program. Since I was in my own school, the people that are in the school, the other teachers, the uh, speech pathologists, other, other staff members were very supportive. And they opened up and they gave me, they were just invaluable to give me more information to help me along. They were very supportive. Um, the other thing, working as a paraeducator for two years, you don't just get the classroom experience. You get that real world experience of being in a school to see what else goes on in a school, how decisions are made, what the, you know, the day-to-day -day life is like. And it also gives you an inside uh, view for when you when you do graduate and you go to look for a job. It gives you some more information. Um, the other benefit, as Lori mentioned, was that I could take two classes in one evening. That was very practical. Also, as a Montgomery County employee, you can take classes offered by Montgomery County. And where this comes into play is to become certified you need certain reading classes, and you can take those anywhere. They're not part of the master's program, but if you take them through the Montgomery County system, that means you go to a school, you take it through the fall or the spring, and for a nominal fee, you get credit for that reading class. Um, and, and also, it's important to know that those reading classes are prerequisites, but you can possibly be taking them while when you started the program. That's a prerequisite. Okay. Um, another, I have to mention this. This was a surprise to me when I was, when I completed the program and I was being hired as a teacher. Montgomery County has a pay scale for teachers that is based on your education. And the pay scale is based on whether you have a bachelor's, a master's, a master's plus 30, or a master's plus 60. Because this program is uh, 39 credits, and Montgomery County considers a master's as 30 credits, it already gave me nine credits towards my master's plus 30. So that was a financial benefit that I wasn't even aware of. Um, so to continue, I want to reiterate a bit about what Dr. DeBettencourt said about the classes. Um, they prepare you with the practical information that you need, but just as much they give you that professional attitude and um, make you familiar with the professional standards that are going to carry you through in your job. Um, even though I was a paraeducator for 10 years, as, a, as in this program, there's so much that you don't know. So for instance, the behavior, the math methods, the accessibility of technology, how to write a lesson plan, assessment and testing, how to collaborate with other people, 
the law. Those were all things that, as I say, this is three years now, but I say, I use what I've learned from my master's every single day. I also want to talk about the evidence-based practices that Johns Hopkins is known for. You, you learn what works. You learn that there's research that backs up what works when you work with children. And that is not as common as you might think. And um, that serves me even now because I have new situations. Every day is different. Every year is different. And I'm always looking and going back and looking at new strategies. So for example, right now, we are going to start using a strategy called PALS, which is when peer-assisted learning strategy. So we're going to match up our students for reading and um, about to launch that. And I have, I'm just again grateful that because of the program, I'm familiar with specific strategies and I'm familiar with specific resources to go to to help me find out more. So again, the program is extremely relevant and um, it gives you the tools to keep up with the changes in the field, the changes in the schools, um, and I just feel extremely well prepared. Um, some of the benefits also beyond just working with the students is that you are part of a team. So in my case, I'm part of the fifth grade team, and I am an equal team member when, we, when the fifth grade plans for reading and for math. And because of my background, I've been able to bring so much to the table to say, well, I use this strategy, or what about this strategy, or research what shows that this is a better method. So it's been very rewarding to me on that point. Um, I also want to say that I was very pleased that after our, our, my first year teaching, our special ed program at my school was recognized countywide by the PTA for our excellence. So that was, uh, again, it was just confirmation, affirmation to me that I had a good education and I continue to use it. Yeah, congratulations. Um, uh, thank you. Great, thank you, Grace. And now we're gonna turn it back to admissions to talk about the application. All right, thank you. <clears throat> so moving on to the application deadline. So the application deadlines for the 2018-2019 academic year are on enrollment admissions. I will share it for um, the Senate uh, program application deadline is February 1st, and ABA, again, will, uh, which will be covered on January 30th, application deadline is on April 1st. Application requirements. Uh, for the requirements, we need your application for admission along with an $80 application fee, um, your resume, two letters of recommendation, um, essay, uh, official transcripts from all post-secondary institutions attended, and test scores such as practice one, um, SAT, ACT, or GRE scores. And for international students, so if you're an international student, there are additional uh, steps that you would need to take in order to complete the application process. Uh, you must submit a TOEFL or IELTS score. Um, in addition to that, if your degree was completed outside of the U.S., you will need to complete a course-by-course -course evaluation. Uh, please contact the Office of International Services if you have additional questions. or the tuition. Uh, one quick update, I will share, um, I know it says 39,000 for the accelerated Master of Science in Special Education, just a quick update on that. Um, it is 774 per credit, um, and then, which comes up to 2,322 uh, per three credit, and with 13 courses and also enrollment registration fees, you're looking at a total of 32,000. So I apologize um, again for the 39. Um, it is 32,000 approximately for the total tuition. Um, and then part-time uh, master's program, 774 per credit, graduate certificate in autism, 840 per credit. Uh, again, if you have any questions regarding to tuition, please uh, visit our website. Financial aid. 
Um, if you're interested in applying for financial aid, we strongly encourage you to apply for financial aid. When you get started on your application, uh, please visit our website if you have any questions relating to financial aid. And these are some dates to just keep in mind for uh, April 1st deadline for the summer semester, uh, June 1st for the fall, and November 1 for the spring semester. And there are limited grants and scholarship opportunities that are available. Our contact information for the Office of Admissions um, for email, feel free to uh, email and also a uh, phone number. And this is our also our mailing address uh, for those who want to send their transcripts or letter of recommendation. Uh, contact information again for Dr. DeBettencourt and Dr. Martyr for uh, their email address and also Camila Mika Sims, the academic program coordinator, as well too. Here are their email address. And it looks like Dr. De uh, Devenport has a comment. So just to add some information about the application process. If you have any questions specifically about the Montgomery County Public School SET it um, program, I have um, open information sessions every month um, here at the Columbia campus where you can come in and talk to me about your specific situation and any more specific questions about that program. Or I could probably answer any of the programs if you're nearby, but I do have um, um, availability and just contact Camilla Mika Sims and she'll be able to tell you when that, when those open information sessions are. And they're also published on the Montgomery County website, public school website. The other thing to keep in mind is you're writing your application what we're looking for in your essay is something about why you want to be a special educator. So talk to us about if you have experience in the area of special education, or if you don't, or if you have a family member and that's why you're choosing special education, talk about that in your essay. Um, two letters of recommendation. Again, it's always good to get someone to talk about your experiences with kids, if you're currently working as a teacher or a para, it might be good to have someone who oversees you in terms of either a department chair or an assistant principal to write a letter in your support. Um, and if you, again, if you have any questions about the specifics of what to put into those letters of recommendation or what to put into that essay, um, please contact Camilla Mika Sims and she can give you more information or you can contact either Dr. Martyr or myself. All right, so thank you for attending the graduate program in special education virtual webinar. At this time, Dr. DeBenport and Dr. Martyr and I would like to open up the floor for questions. Um, so it looks like there are, uh, we do have one question. Uh, the question is, you know, uh, there are someone is uh, very curious about what do Johns Hopkins University School of Education uh, graduates uh, for the special education program? Can you tell us a little bit about, you know, their employment after the program? Okay, after I can start. This is Dr. Bettencourt. Uh, many of our graduates end up either employed in a public school setting or in one of the many different schools around the area that service. Uh, special needs kids in their entirety. So it might go that they go to a public school and work as Grace did as part of a team on a uh, elementary um, level or at a secondary level, but there's also several private schools. But we also have some people who have graduated from our program who have immediately gone on to a doctoral program. Uh, we recommend that you get some experience before you enter a doctoral program, but I have one student right now who graduated just recently and she's entering into a uh, DACA program in the area of psychology. We've had other people who have worked a couple years in the field of special education and then gone on to a doctorate in special education. We've also had some individuals who have graduated from our program who have gone into um, advocacy work with special education. And Dr. Martyr, I don't know if you have any. Let me just add one more, and that is um, a lot of students um, also go on to not only just, I know you talked about being teachers in the classroom, but also they move on to coordinator positions within their schools where they are supervising multiple classrooms, serving students with disabilities. Or they might come back and take our ABA program and become a um, behavior analyst. Correct. 
Uh, next question. I am taking classes at Prince George's Community College. Currently, I have two classes left that I will be taking in the spring. I will be certified to teach. I will have passed all requirements needed to be certified, classes and tests. How will this program benefit me? So my guess is that you will be, um, so I'm guessing you'll be certified in special education. A lot of people, as I said, the ideal candidate, some people who have come through the community college or even um, a college level um, program, um, it benefits to get a master's in special education. Not only will you get um, a real emphasis on reflective practitioner training, legal issues, and evidence-based practice, use of evidence-based practices, but you'll also have a master's degree. And a master's degree in special education can allow you to provide support for families as a consultant or even um, school districts to go in and be a resource to a school district. So having that extra couple letters behind your name is um, significant in terms of whether you want to hang out your shingle, so to speak, as an individual um, with skills or to provide tutoring for kids that'll make you a better uh, candidate for jobs like that. But if nothing else, if you decide to stay in the classroom as a special educator, it will give you, like I said, your toolkit will be much larger. The next question, I do not hold initial teacher certification, but I am interested in obtaining both special education certification and eventually applied behavior analysis certification. Which degree pathway would lead me to obtaining both credentials? So in order to apply to our ABA program, our post-master's certificate in ABA, you must first have a master's degree. And that needs to follow the, um, the Professional Organization of Behavior Analyst Certification Board. They set out standards for what type of master's degree you would need. So you would need to have a master's degree in education psychology, or psychology. And the majority of our students who go through our master's degree here, I think Dr. Jovenkort just mentioned this, and do get certified in special education and then can apply to our post-masters in the ABA program here. So you could do the master's degree in mild to moderate, get certified in special education through the state of Maryland, and then apply for the ABA program here. You'd be eligible. Wonderful. Uh, next question, is the special education curriculum developed or aligned with national standards for special education? Yes, we have our program learning objectives, which are clearly outlined on every syllabus that you will receive that shows not only are they, they're aligned for the in-task and uh, the special ed, uh, professional organization of the Council for Exceptional Children. So you'll see every course you take, how that maps into the entire program. And then when we add up all the courses, courses and their own program learning objectives, it matches up to the standards that are required for special education. If anything, you're going to over excel in that respect. You're, we're, we're not just standard based, we're probably over standard based and that you're gonna get more than what the basic uh, standards require. Thank you. Another great question. Can you describe the supervised internship process and the placement process for special education students? So our candidates, when they get ready to um, do their internship, if you're not part of the cohort where it's very much prescribed in the spring semester of your two years, they are, there is a link on our field experience office website that says you want to take your internship because everyone other than the cohort takes their 13 courses at their own speed. You apply to that and once you uh, hit that link, that goes to our field experience office and then they come back to me and say, is this person ready to take the internship? In other words, do they have the right courses behind them? And if so, are they ready to be placed? And then we work together with the field experience office and you and your advisor, which would be me, to make sure that where we place you works for your life. And we make sure that then there's a mentor teacher there who the administrator approves and then we also make sure that there's a university supervisor who's there. One thing to mention too that's part of our program is that we, um, there's a Praxis one that you take before you come in that's also required by the state for licensure. 
certification. Then there's a praxis due in special education, which you usually take after the first semester, which is also required for licensure and certification by the state. And then you take a comprehensive exam and a graduate project. And the comprehensive exam is a three hour written exam that you take at a computer about three quarters of the way through the program. And that you uh, are given three different questions and asked to write up your answers. One is an application, one is just specific content, maybe a legal issues question, and one is maybe just the question about mild, moderate disabilities. Then the gradual project at the end is done during your internship, and during that point in time, you actually um, look at, a, you, can, you can choose, you have about six different options to do for that project, but one that a lot of students do is where they pick a child that they're working with and they collect data um, from that child, implement some type of evidence-based intervention, and then they collect data on how well the child improved. And then they present in front of their peers and the faculty here, and, uh, and we determine, you know, we give you feedback on it. And that's actually a really nice way to end the program because it shows us that you can actually apply the skills that we've been teaching you um, with, before you set out, before we let you get out the door, before you leave and go out the door. Uh, well, another question. I am a teacher in the autism program in Montgomery County. I am currently certified in special education K through eight. I would like to have the ability to work with students up to 21. I am trying to figure out which program is best designed for someone like me. I have to get my master's and would like to get in the field I am working in. I, I would say, Given that description, I would recommend looking at the master's degree in autism. If you are already certified in special education, it would make sense to then move it into the master's degree if that's what you are pursuing, if that's the degree you want to get, and looking specifically at serving students with autism and severe disabilities. So you will have the, all the coursework in autism, you will have some general special ed coursework, but you'll also have coursework that focuses on teaching communication and social skills, uh, working in the community. We also have, um, I'm sorry, training individuals to work in a community, like community-based instruction, so thinking about some of our older students. And then also, um, you have an opportunity to look at um, instructional practices, <clears throat> excuse me, specific to severe disabilities. So I would say in that case, I would recommend the master's in autism. But if you do have more questions about that and those options, definitely feel free to reach out to me, Dr. Marder, to discuss it. Time for one more question. It says, can you please share areas of research focus background of each of the faculty members? Right, I'm going to take that one first. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to jump to my next yes. meeting. Mm -hmm. um, but um, so this is Dr. Marder. My area of interest is, again, looking at evidence-based practices and how do we train teachers on those evidence-based practices following specific strategies and training. Uh, for example, I'm currently looking at um, how do we train our paraeducators in, in uh, classrooms, since we see a lot of paraeducators providing a lot of those uh, specific services. And then also looking at um, a, a big area of interest of mine is applied behavior analysis. And so how do we train special, special educators to have that um, very specific training and behavior analysis to improve the outcomes for students with developmental disabilities in the schools. And um, as I am a little bit more, uh, I have a bit of age on Dr. Martyr, I have a few more years of writing and research. So I will tell you that I have written six te textbooks one in particular is on methods at the secondary level, what types of methods teachers at the secondary level need to have that's different than the elementary. Um, I've also written a book talking about the very first couple of years of teachers out in the field and what types of skills that they need to have so that they're successful the first two years. And recently, a lot of my research has been on reflective practices. How do you train teachers to to, through those two internships so that they come out with a very conf, uh, confidence in the reflective practitioner as a reflective practitioner 
And we use a lot of videotaping that's being done across the country now. And so we've looked at video analysis and how teachers can videotape themselves and then look at them, look at the videos and make uh, decisions about changing their behaviors based on what they see. The other thing that I've done recently is look at English language learners as our country becomes more diverse. We've looked at how do we prepare our candidates to make sure that they're culturally proficient and uh, the and what does that mean and how is that incorporated into the training of our teachers so if I were to say over the course of my 30 some years um, the most fun I have is the research that I do that talks about the training of teachers uh, whether they come to me as having some experience or whether they come to me with absolutely no education experience how to uh, get them to a point where they are confident and they are using evidence-based practices to make their decision. And by using evidence-based practices, I know that's a term that's used a lot in the field. What we mean is that if we were to, our kids in special ed are already behind. And so if we just do the same thing that general education teachers do, our, our students, our kids will not progress beyond a year because the fact that they're in special ed means they have trouble doing that. So, but if we use evidence-based practices, there is a chance that we can get some of them caught up um, and get them to improve more than a year's worth of growth in one year. So that's why we're so excited about using that and we make sure that when you leave, um, you know how to implement it. Or as Grace said, if a new strategy comes online, you know how to go back and research it and make sure that it does have the research behind it to implement all right it looks like there are no more questions thank you again for your interest in the john's hockey school of education we look forward to hearing from you have a good evening